So it is 1 a.m. and I am crazily opening a bunch of stuff right now. Um, I had this crazy itch to do some watercolor and I got a few things to upgrade because why not? So this tiny, tiny thing of watercolor, uh, <laughs> I kind of forgot that it's like a five milliliter pack and not the bigger size, which is 15. Um, <laughs> it's so small, look at it. So we're going to start with the paint. Um, I've got brushes here and I've got a new palette, which I really, really shouldn't have got to be honest. But when you get new paints, you just kind of want to start fresh. I don't want to throw away all the paint that's piled up in like, I have two other palettes. <laughs> um, I got a few extras here. This is based on recommendations from other artists. Um, so these are the big ones, and I kind of thought that this pack was going to be this size. So this is the 15 millimeter here, and this is the 5 millimeter. Um, yeah, it's okay. I mean, the fact of the matter is these are going to take forever. I still have a whole set here. These are my Winsor & Newton Cotmans here. I've had these, like, basically since 2017, maybe, so... Eh, I had these forever. They don't they don't go away. Like not if you barely watercolor. So I just want to take these out and have a quick look and then we'll open the others. This is the watercolor essentials set. Uh so basically what this is is a warm and cool palette of red, yellow, and blue, the standard colors. And here we are. They are so small. Holy cow. <laughs> um, so we have... Okay, I can't even see these. But... I'm sorry, I'm on my phone. I'm on my phone here, so this is like really awkward. My phone and then my camera has my audio going, so it's like my first unboxing and it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> so we're gonna look at the rest of these babies. Um, again, this is the Artegria Premium Quality Watercolor Brushes. Um, the package, sorry, the series is called Intuition. It's very fancy. I love this little box it came in though. It's pretty sweet. Uh, they came very highly recommended on Amazon. Um, I spend quite a long time usually um, reading comments and reviews and just trying to discern whether they seem like legit ones and <laughs> um, you know this one had like tens of thousands I mean a lot of things have thousands and it's just kind of like you just kind of have to grain of salt it or really read through a bunch and you'll get a sense um, Wow, really fancy. Look at this. A little velvet case. Look at that. Look at that. It's pretty nice. I gotta say. I mean, I like, I'm a big packaging nerd, so uh, this is like Christmas for me. Especially when they come with nice packaging. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that tube. Uh, a little thank you note, which is kind of nice. Um, as far as I know, this company has a website that tells you how to take care of these. Um, I'm not that great with taking care of my brushes, but the best that I can do, or the best that I usually do, is just sort of swish them around in my hand like this with some soap under the running water in the sink. That's as far as I know. I think that's enough. You just have to be careful not to get water in this portion of it because it can sort of wet up the glue and then it can like come loose but anyway so here's the other nine brushes here uh, I'm gonna take them all out of these little individual packagings which is kind of unfortunate <laughs> it's crazy because these aren't even like a flap that's like taped over it's like I gotta cut these open I've been dying to open the rest of this stuff um, and I usually like to film this kind of thing during the day because it's prettier but I, I was so impatient 
and I kind of didn't even think about whether or not I was going to do a live unboxing. It's not the kind of thing I normally do. Uh, <laughs> I've never done it before, actually, so, you know, live and learn. I guess there's no point in putting it off or, you know, trying to make everything perfect. I figured this is a little more candid and, uh, you know, as long as my setup allows, I did get a new microphone for all of this. It was just a cheap, well, not cheap, but cheaper than what most people spend, I guess. I just got the Rode video mic, video micro, I don't know, whatever. It's just the tiny little red and black shotgun one that you can stick on top of your camera, but it actually sounds really great if you keep it just far enough from your face that you're not like pu 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 in it. <laughs> Some plosives, am I right? Ugh, audio. I'm not an audio file. I know nothing about audio, and it's actually the most annoying part of filming for me, uh, of doing YouTube at all, is I'm struggling with that. Um, my last video that I just did, the audio sounds like I'm recording on my phone again, and it's because of this thing. We're just side note on, we're just gonna sidetrack and talk about friggin' audio. This thing, uh, called a dead cat, which I find hysterically funny, um, it, uh, you know, it hides the puh 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 sounds and if you laugh and wind and all that stuff. But the problem is, it also just hides um, every sound I make, so you can't tell if I'm saying F or S or whatever. Uh, it makes it really muffled and I can't use it, so my last video is a bit screwy because of that. But anyway, <laughs> tangent aside, sorry, this is taking forever because every friggin' brush is like every friggin' brush is individually wrapped where I have to cut it. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of fun. <laughs> Lord, and plastic, plastic, plastic. All right, look at these babies, alrighty. So we've got a bunch of rounds. Um, oh, there's more stuff, hold on, there's more plastic. I don't know if I should, I, I usually keep these things on because I'm like super anal retentive about screwing them up, but <laughs> I think in this case, for demonstrations purposes and for my sanity. I just have to take these off, otherwise I can't see what they are. Okay, round, 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 round. So we have, where's the one I had earlier? Oh my God, sorry, I'm, Ugh. so a 12, 10, six, eight, there's a three randomly, okay. There's a four? Huh. That's kind of, I guess that's the three is essentially close enough. Whatever. So <laughs> we've got 12 here, 10, 8, 6, 3, 0. I will try to show you these while I stand up and move to the camera. So editing me here, I realized I just stopped talking for 20 seconds. Dead air. Um, so these are really good. I've used them quite a bit now and they do retain their tip, which I love. Um, most brushes I find get splayed out and shitty, but these ones definitely keep their point. Um, highly recommend. So that was the 10, no, sorry. It starts at 12, 10, eight, six, three, and zero round, which is pretty nice good variety lots of rounds that's basically what I like is rounds flats and that's it <laughs> I don't really use much else I just like to have a really really skinny one um, this one actually looks like it's pretty good they all go to a really nice tip at the end which I love uh, so there's also two flats here and then I think I heard somebody calling these cat tongues I don't I have literally no use for this I don't know what the point of this uh, one is here. I find it really, they're kind of strange looking. I don't know. Yeah, I think these are called cat tongues. I don't know. I, I don't understand these. I don't have any use for them. Uh, one says three quarter and one says three eight. Not sure what that's about. May knock about with those. I don't know. But these are the other thing that I like to have, which is flats. Um, 
I just kind of grabbed these by what looks good. I never really paid attention to the numbers on them. So this one says three quarter, I'm assuming of an inch. Uh, and then this one says six. So those are two very different numbers and I don't know what that means. That's okay though. Maybe we'll do some research later. So that's our paints and our brushes, which is pretty nice. I'm really excited because the brushes are really nice. As I said, I already opened it and tried one because I was so excited that I just couldn't wait. So I tried that last week before any of the paints even came. Uh, lastly though, uh, I have this watercolor palette. I think you can see that there. It's like, yeah, it's a metal one. I've always wanted one of these. One of the things that, sorry, I'm like rolling around in my chair. One of the things I'll say is that I have always kind of, I've always wanted a metal palette just because it's usually, usually, I don't know if that's going to be true here, um, better for mixing because with plastic, the water tends to beat up and not spread around so that you can like, you know, get a nice wash going, but it's hard to talk about all this without demoing, so at some point we will try and do that, but it is also really tiny. This is hilarious. When I, I did open this earlier too, because I was like, I wanna look at it. Um, it's really small. I thought this was gonna be bigger. This is basically something you would wanna take with you, I think, uh, to do plain air or something. It does have one of these guys, so you know, you would just kinda hold it and then you know, you would just kind of hold it like this and just, you know, rock out. But this isn't how I work. I work studio only. I'm not a plain air painter. Um, but yeah, it's a lot smaller than I thought. I knew it was half pans. I am not a fan of pans as much. I prefer like a plastic palette worth the wells, I guess they're called. So this is going to be an adjustment. I've always wanted a metal one though, and I just want to try it out. We will see. Uh, hopefully this isn't like a big mistake. <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to do is we're going to go voiceover now while I, I think, make like a little diagram of what I want to go where. I am going to be adding a little bit of my Cotman's in with this because there's colors in here that I like. Um, like Payne's Gray, Viridian, there's a couple others that I would need, um, like Burnt Sienna and all that kind of stuff. So we'll draw a diagram and then we'll fill these up and uh, do a little bit of swatching, I think. So yeah, let's get into it. Oh hey, editing me here. I'm recording this weeks later after this was shot and a few days before uploading. <laughs> I'm realizing this now that I completely forgot to actually go over the full color palette. <laughs> I'm new at this kind of content and I was a bit awkward and nervous while unboxing and completely forgot. I may do a proper palette walkthrough and swatching sesh later once I've had more time with it. I have actually had some time with it though and like all of my text pop-ups said, I love this palette size. <laughs> my other palettes are these huge big rectangular things and while it's great to have a lot of mixing wells and space, it takes up well too much space with all the other crap that I need to have spread eagle on my damn desk. My setup has recently had an upgrade and even though my desk is bigger than my old Ikea Linman or whatever Whatever that cheap hollow particle board thing I had was called. I love my new setup, but I swear the more space you make for yourself, the more your gear seems to envelop it. I don't know how that works. Anyway, this little metal palette is my new favorite. There isn't a ton of mixing room, so I do have to wipe away sometimes to make room, but I just love that it sits on my sketchbook while I work. It's very cozy and convenient. I've tried to draw my character Vair like 20 times since this unboxing, and I'm comfy with these colors. Uh, I love the palette, like I said. Love Daniel Smith, but they are expensive. I've decided to try replacing my Winsor Newton Cotman's. I find them too chalky and with Turner watercolors. I'm pretty jazzed my local art store, uh, which is literally two minutes around the corner from my house is amazing. They have a really good selection. 
They carry Daniel Smith and Turner and like a ton of others. They actually carry a bunch I want to try, like their Da Vinci and uh, the Golden Cores. I wouldn't mind trying some of the Pro Windsor and Newton too, because they have some banger colors, honestly. Anyway, pink tangent over. I'm cut off for a bit until I practice more and actually get somewhere with this. We'll see. Uh, so watercolor content is happening? Yeah. I'm going to tangent again here, since this is an off-the-cuff kind of video. I'm going to take a bit of a moment away from tutorial videos. I think I mentioned that before. I need to get more comfortable making video content, and I think um, I bit off a bit more than I could chew. This is not uncommon for me. Uh, with those tutorials. So I'd like to get more mileage out of making videos. I think I'm going to challenge myself to a 30 day sketchbook challenge. Uh, I would do Monday to Friday until I hit 30 days though. Like I'm not out here trying to do this on weekends, especially since it's the summer. That's patio time here in Toronto and we need it. Summer is short here. <laughs> anyway, uh, I meant to start this this week, but I'm kind of all over the place right now. My schedule is all over the place. I need to get back into a proper regimen. So the plan is to film sketchbook sessions and literally do the voiceover and upload daily. Again, Monday to Friday for 30 days. Uh, it sounds nutty, but I think I can manage if I simplify, which is part of the goal here to make YouTube more manageable and not have it take over my entire fucking life. This will get me comfy with YouTube videos, making sketching more of a habit and get me watercoloring. And hopefully it'll give me a little boost in the algorithm as well. <laughs> I need it. Uh, so win, win, win. Anyway, I've also started up my print shop prep. Uh, I'm so excited about this. I got a used like new silhouette cameo three. Ah, I'm so excited about this. And I've been designing my first sticker set and playing around with my new toy. Uh, I like toys. It is a really cool little machine and I'm having a blast. Uh, so I'll be documenting that in the background as well. Lots of footage, lots of content, content, content. Um, after the 30 day sketch time, I'll be uploading my shop prep journey and I want to have my first listing up on Etsy by September the latest, I think. That's my birthday month. Um, I'd like to start on Etsy just to get a sense of selling art online, but eventually I'd like to switch to Shopify. Uh, I don't really want to rely on social media platforms as heavily because they can screw you over at any minute. Um, so yeah, anyway, lots going on. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this video. If you'd like to see a more detailed look at the paints and swatching, I'm definitely down to do that. As well as I will be continuing my Photoshop brush series and a follow up to my character design video. But like I said before, I want to simplify this process a bit and get better at it before returning to tutorial content. So mini hiatus for those. They're pretty taxing and I want to just kind of get better at it. So in general, if you're into art, world building, vlogs, and art business type content, hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. I upload every Friday afternoon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.